Question number six is from radioactivity. Again, modern physics. Now it says a radioactive material having half-life 18 days has radiation 64 times the permissible. What is the minimum number of days after which permissible limit is reached? Now see that when the intensity reduces 64 times, then the permissible limit would be reached. And for intensity to decrease by 64 times, six half lives has to be there because that's straightforward, two raised to the power six. And the half life is 18 days. So six half life would be 108 days. So option number C would be the correct answer. So with this discussion of question number six, we end with section one. Now we'll go to section two. All right, now let's begin question number seven. And with question number seven, we have entered into section two, wherein more than one options may be correct. It could be only one option or it could be multiple options. And let me explain you the marking scheme. Say for example, correct option for this question are A, B, D as an example. And if someone bubbles A, B, D, then the award would be plus four. But there's also a partial marking scheme. Out of A, B, D, someone bubbles only A, B. So these are two options out of the correct one. Then now, plus one for this, plus one for this. But if among this, one incorrect option is bubbled, then the whole thing would go into negative marking of minus two. And for no attempt, there would be zero marks. So this is quite an interesting game where you have to have strong confidence before you do. And this question is with experimental physics, the time period in this way. This experiment or this data may be collected from anywhere. You might be knowing that if there's a spherical ball which is rolling on a bowl, it will be having this time period. Capital R is this, small r is this. And time period is, you know, measured in this different way by stopwatch whose least count is this much. Now we need to first verify error in small r. This is small r, so the error in small r would be 1 by 10 into 100 percent, that would be 10 percent. Now let's go to error in time period. For time period, first of all we need to calculate the mean value. So t mean would be 0 0.52 plus 0 0.56 plus 0 0.57 plus 0 0.54 plus 0 0.59. These are the five ensembles divided by five. I've calculated this and that comes out to be 0 0.56. So this would be taken as the real value or true value. But now we need the mean absolute error. It's a mean absolute error. So that would be for the first case, look, the error is 0 0.04. We'll not see the negative one. For the second case is 0. For the third is 0 0.01. For the fourth is 0 0.02. And for the fifth is, you see, 0 0.03. Divided by 5, when you do, that comes out to be 0 0.02. Now, this is the mean absolute error. This is the time period. Delta T by T into 100% when you do, you would land up with this thing. Now, let's go to calculate the fourth option because C is already proven to be incorrect. This comes, we need to see G. So, G would be, quite obviously, 4 pi square into 7 into R minus R divided by 5t, that would be the situation. And now, 5t square, I suppose. That's the case. You can see here, this is 7r minus r. The 5 would come there. g is there. 4 pi square by t square, fine. And delta g by g would be delta r minus r by r minus r plus 2 delta t by t into 100%. Here you need to be careful. This one is something like this, say. The 
difference in the error is added. So, that would be 2 by r minus r would be 50 plus 2 into 3.57, you see, into 100 percent it comes. And that would give you 11 percent. So, option number D would also be the correct one. Here, you have to be careful on this point. Quantity is subtracted, but the absolute error is added. So that was with question number 7. Now it's time to move to question number 8.